In this lesson, we're going to create two chess pieces. Let's start by clicking Resources, Learning Center, View All, and scroll down to the Chess Pawn exercise. Click that and go through the steps of the exercise to create your chess pawn. As you can see, I've already done that. So I'm going to click Review to get to the finished piece. And there it is. I'm going to export that as an STL, and it will have the name Chess Pawn. If I look in my Downloads folder, you can see the file right there. So you can print that one now, if you wish, and take a photograph of it and post it to the class Brightspace page. But you can wait as well, because in the second part of the lesson, I would like to challenge you to create a second chess piece, in particular, a rook. If you're not sure what a rook looks like, you can do a Google search for chess rook and click on images. And you can see that the design is fairly standard, even though there are lots of variations. Um, but the idea is that it's a castle turret with a crenellation at the top. So that's what we want to create. Before I leave the exercise, I'm going to click on the pawn and click ungroup several times until the icon is grayed out, meaning that I cannot ungroup it anymore so that I've got all the pieces separated. I'm going to click and drag to make sure I have everything selected, and I'm going to choose Copy. Now I'm going to click on the Tinkercad icon to exit the exercise, and then click my avatar, and click New Design and 3D Design. And here I'm going to click Paste. So I have an exact duplicate of the pawn design in all of its separate pieces. So while they're all still selected, I'm going to move that over to the side and deselect it. And the reason I imported the pawn is because I want to use it as a reference in creating my Rook model. I want it to be proportional to the pawn, so a little bit larger. And I would like it also to have the same design components that the pawn has. So with the pawn, we started with a flat disc that's 20 by 20 and three millimeters tall. So I'll drag out a new cylinder, move the sides slider all the way to the right to smooth out the sides. And instead of 20 by 20, I'll make it 25 by 25. And instead of three millimeters tall, I'll make it four millimeters tall. So it's going to be a little bit larger than the pawn. Next on the pawn, there was a cone that was 20 millimeters in diameter and 11 meter millimeters tall. So I'll drag out a new cone, move the sides slider all the way over to make it nice and smooth. And instead of 20 by 20, I'll make it 25 by 25. And instead of 11 millimeters tall, I'll make it 15 millimeters tall. And the disc is four millimeters high, so I will lift up the cone four millimeters. And now I can center them and group them. So I'll select both, center from side to side and front and back. And while both models are selected, click group. The next design component of the pawn is this rounded bottom piece. And if you recall, that was a flattened sphere. So I'll drag a sphere out, slide all the way to the right to make it as smooth as possible. And this sphere was 18 by 18. I'll make mine 23 by 23. And the height of this sphere was five. So I'll make the height of mine a little bit bigger, say six, okay. And I also want to raise this up four millimeters. Now I can move this over select both of these models, center side to side, center front and back, and group. 
All right, so now I have the bottom section of the rook. It matches the bottom section of the pawn. Next is this larger cone that forms the main body of the pawn. And this cone is 14 by 14. Once again, we'll drag out a new cone, smooth the sides, and instead of 14 by 14, we'll make it 18 by 18. And this cone is 28 millimeters tall. We'll make this one a little larger, say 36. And we'll also raise it four millimeters and move it over, select all the pieces, center side to side, center front and back. But before we group it at this point, um, I want to make some more changes because the top part of the new chess piece, the rook, obviously is going to look different than the pawn. So if we go back and look at our samples, we can see that the bottom part of the rook is a, just a little bit wider than the top part. So it kind of goes in a bit. So we'll go back here and reselect our cone and we'll change the top radius so that it doesn't come to a point but has some dimension to it. Let's say seven. Okay, that looks pretty good. So once again, I'll select everything, click on the align tool just to make sure that it's everything's still aligned and then click group. Okay, so the rook is coming along. The only thing that remains is creating the crenellation at the top. But also I noticed that there's this cone here that has this flaring out effect at the top. So it would be nice to, to mirror that design element as well. So once again, we'll drag out a new cone, smooth it out. In this case, I'm going to leave the diameter of the cone 20 by 20, but I'm just going to lower the height a little bit to 15. Now I will flip it over 180 degrees, remind myself of what the height, the current height of the rook model is. It's 40, so I'll raise this up 40 millimeters. Select everything, align the pieces, click off to deselect the pieces. I know that the new cone is 15 millimeters tall, so I'm going to drop it 15 millimeters to 25 so that the top is flush those two flat areas are flush. Then I'll select both and group. Looking at this crenellation, how are we going to make that? Well, there are any number of ways. Looks like a cylinder with a hole cut out of it and with slits cut out of the sides. So I'm going to start with a cylinder, smooth it out. I know that this top circle here is 20 millimeters in diameter. So I want to make sure that this is as well, and it is. And the height, you can choose whatever height you like for your crenellations, but six looks like a good height to be there. So we'll leave that as it is. Now I'm going to drag out a cylindrical hole, smooth it out, and I'd like the thickness of the crenellations to be two millimeters. So I'm going to subtract two and minus two again, so minus four from each of the diameter dimensions. Um, that'll leave me with 16 by 16. Now move that over, center it, it's already centered, and now I can select both and cut out. So I have a ring. Now all that remains is to cut out the open spots of the turrets. Drag out a hollow square or a whole square. Let's say four millimeters thick. And I'll drag that over here. I'll look at it from the top in orthographic view. So I'm looking straight down. Tap the F key so I zoom in to see what I'm working on. 
and I'm going to click duplicate and then rotate the duplicate copy 90 degrees. Now I can select all of those models, make sure they're centered both directions and then group. Okay, so I now have my crenellation and I need to raise it up 40 millimeters. So I'll click the mo that model, raise it up 40, move it over, select both, center, center, and group. And there you have a basic rook. If I select both and tap at focus to go in on them, I'll select all of the pieces of the pawn and regroup those so we can look at them side by side. I think that looks fairly good. If you want to make your own rook using different elements or different techniques, feel free to do so. If you would like to add additional decoration to your rook, uh, for instance, it might be interesting to have windows in the tower. Now we could create those by dragging out the round roof. Let's say we make that five millimeters by five millimeters tall, and we'll stretch it out and turn it into a hole. Now if I look at that from the top, click duplicate, rotate the duplicate, so that I have two of them, and I can select both of those and group them so that I can move them as one piece. I can select those holes and the rook and center that way and center this way and click group. So now I have a tower with holes in it. So that looks good. So I will just rename the model. And what I can do now is actually select both of them and export as a single model, bring into flash print and slice and print, and take a photo of both of them, both of the printed models, and post to the class website. Or if you prefer, you can export each model separately and print them in separate colors, or just print them at separate times, however you wish.